football? What? Nothing. Super Doppler says it is a stormy night in Bowling Green. The rain led to an unbelievable mud bowl. What's better than mud football? Chris Bullock's got mud all over the cage. Anthony Turner here. There's the first down line. And he's sliding for... It looks like they're, they're curling. They ought to get some Canadian fellas and do some curling. Turner would run the ball in eventually for a touchdown. All right, 7-3. to three. That's Trevor Cook. Earlier, he came on and just blasted a field goal into the wind. There's the poor sound guy. I hope we're getting double time pay. Well, the, the, the snap, hard to handle. Cook slips. It's blocked. One more look. Kyle Decker can't get his hands on the ball. Cook nearly crews himself trying to get to the ball. Now it's still 7-3. We've got 11.30 left. It's just a... It, it's... Giggity, giggity, giggity. It's a quagmire. Mike Kokel to Dustin Woods. All right, touchdown pass. There was actually 260 yards of passing yard, passing yardage in this game. Hard to believe. All right, eight minutes. Oh, well, wait, wait. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. More fun with the kicking You're game. I am. It's a mud game. We get a block kick by Kenny Lewis, so it's still nine to seven, which means a field goal will win it. Look at this mud. I'm not even going to describe the play. Who cares? That's Kokel sliding in the slop. You might get another quagmire out of me here. Oh yeah, I got more chances for you. There's Kokel at 7.40. There's Kokel at 10.14. Oh, we've got a field goal chance for Sean Ellis. Sean Ellis is in. Got to try to make it. He's had four kicks blocked this season. Oh, he's had four blocked. This is not blocked, but Ellis, bless his heart, only guy in the field with a clean jersey. Oh, he slips and he stunks it. It's a hosel rocket. Bowling green. Loses as the footing and the giggity giggity. Just not up to par. Shane Montgomery, somewhere in there after the sadness. There's Shane Montgomery. Woo! Win number two. It was two Thursdays ago that West Virginia's BCS title hopes took a crippling hit. A convincing win, though, in the backyard brawl could at least ease the sting and keep the Mountaineers in the BCS bowl picture. Maybe the title picture. That might be a reach. There's Pat White. After a Tyler Palco touchdown pass here, it's Steve Slayton. Number five to number ten equals six. We're tied at seven. Follow me. End of the second. We are tied at 17. West Virginia does that little rolling rugby punt. And Darrell Rivas picks it up, and here we go. Trying to get a block, and he gets a huge one. Rivas down the sidelines. One man to beat, the punter able to slow him up, but he's still spinning into the end zone. Moments like that are when it's so cool to work at ESPN because you watch it again and again, you can't believe what you're seeing. It's Derek Kinder, a wide receiver who had six catches in 88 for 89 yards. He springs the block, then he watches his, his man. He's like, go get him. Darrell, do your thing, kid. Keep going, baby. Woo! Look at me, I'm balling. Be careful, Strahan, you know, he did that balling thing, then of course he got hurt. Then here's Revis, one more time, the Kinder block, and then a great shake right there, one of the Mountaineers. Then, well, we've got the punter to beat, so you figure we can, we can beat the punter, and then in honor of Berman, whoop! He slips him, and then old school hits the B button. One of the most amazing runbacks you'll ever see. Unfortunately for Pittsburgh, that is where this highlight needs to end for them to be happy. It does not. All right, you've seen 10 score, now it's five. It's Pat White. It's basically an unstoppable play because he puts it in the gut of Slayton and he takes off and he's gone 64 yards for him. Now the fourth quarter, Slayton. You, you hear about speed, 4-3 speed, 4-4. Four, four. Whatever his speed is, it's speed you can actually see. He's faster than anybody on the field. You cannot stop him. And the Mountaineer faithful, they're obsessed with the number 52. They wanted to hang 52 on Pittsburgh. They only get 45, and then Coach Rod getting some chest bumps, feeling good, and the Pittsburgh fans are going to have to endure a year of hearing meow from the Mountaineer faithful. Four of the last five in this series go to the boys from Morgantown. Palco did as much as he could to keep Pittsburgh in it, threw for nearly 350, but West Virginia's defense held Pitt to negative one yards rushing and shut them out in the second half, and meanwhile, Pat White and Steve Slayton become just the third set of teammates in the history of D1A football to each go for 200 yards in the same game. White and Slayton each rushed for a couple of touchdowns. White threw for a touchdown, and they rushed for 435 as a team. They are an offensive juggernaut, but Kirk Herbstreet, are they still in the BCS title picture?
Big win for the Mounties in this backyard brawl against Pitt. And you look at the big picture. The Mountaineers need a lot of help to have a chance to get back into the national title picture in the championship game. I think realistically, their goal at this point is to continue to play good football against South Florida. Huge showdown December 2nd at home against Rutgers. And that game very easily could decide the Big East championship and a bid to a BCS bowl game. But the national championship, put that on the back burner for now, Mounties. Keep playing good.